Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm privileged to have again Jagosław Stakuń. Hello. We have, today's subject is the uh, what's new in the Red Hat OpenShift number four. Uh, this is the open virtualization portal webinar with our experts. So we have a few weeks ago um, the getting started with the OpenShift. So I hope um, uh, many people which been on the first webinar will come back. So we'll see how many people you know like liked it. But we we have a few good comments. So I think we'll keep going this kind of the webinar, specializing with the containerization. Uh, so Jagosław, a uh, few words about you, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yes, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jaroslav. I work as a solution architect for Red Hat. Uh, I'm with Red Hat for over six years now. I started as a, a middleware uh, architect, uh, focusing on the JBoss uh, middleware portfolio. Uh, over the time I moved to, to OpenShift and container space, so I, I'm focusing now mostly on the OpenShift technology. So a few words about myself. So my name is Pavel Monchka. Uh, I'm a chief technology officer in a, in a story company. We do specialize in a data protection field or uh, on a virtualization, also containerization side and, and in the cloud. I do love playing my guitar and spending the time with my, with, with my family. If I don't have so much webinars with the Red Hat like this year. <laughs> okay, uh, Jagek, let's move forward. So what do we have, to, what do we have today? What's, what's the agenda? Yes, yeah, so today I will try to uh, introduce to you some new cool features that has been introduced with OpenShift. So th there are three, three major topics I would like to focus. So uh, first one is about the uh, OpenShift uh, infrastructure, uh, what has changed between three and four. Uh, then uh, how, how do you work uh, with, with OpenShift, how do you install and maintain the uh, services that mm -hmm. you might install on top of OpenShift. And the last part will be focused on new uh, tools and new functionalities that are dedicated for developers. Okay, we have also a live demo for, for, for at least two yes. uh, of the points. Yes, I will, I, will, I will also try to show you some, some nice features. So we start with the, with the first part, so with the um, Trusted Enterprise Kubernetes, so the, mm -hmm. the in infrastructure uh, in the OpenShift. Uh, so the first big change that has been introduced in OpenShift 4 is the way how you uh, install uh, the platform. Uh, so before, in, in version 3, uh, there was separate process to install your operating system, uh, so, so the, the, the nodes for your cluster, and then you, you had to install on top the, the OpenShift platform. In OpenShift 4, uh, we built a new installer which makes the installation of the whole infrastructure, uh, basically starting from setting up the, uh, the machines in your uh, infrastructure layer, uh, then install the, the uh, operating system and, and the OpenShift platform. As you can see here, we have introduced a new operating system called uh, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS, uh, which is a kind of lightweight version of RHEL. It's based on RHEL 8, uh, but it is focused only on running the uh, uh, containerized work, uh, workloads. And it, is, uh, it runs only, only the, the components that I needed to run containers and, and Kubernetes. So it means that the strategy is to use more and more CoreOS instead of RHEL. Uh, so what will be the major recommendation from the... Yeah, so uh, the, the, uh, with, with CoreOS, uh, we give a lot of automation in the process of uh, installing, upgrading the platform. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I, I talk about it uh, okay. here on the slide. So um, there is a new installer which installs the, uh, uh, the whole infrastructure, uh, starting from the uh, resources. So. Uh, networking, the, the OS layer, uh, storage uh, through the operating system and uh, up to all uh, OpenShift components. And this, uh, th there are two modes uh, of, uh, of this installer. So the first mode you see here, it's, it's fully automated uh, installation where everything is uh, done by uh, the installer. So basically, for example, if you want to install uh, OpenShift on a AWS, mm -hmm. you just uh, provide your credential to your account and uh, all the infrastructure and, and the machines and everything that is needed is provisioned automatically by the installer. 
but also we do understand that <coughs> some customers uh, have some requirements uh, in regards to setting up their um, uh, infrastructure and this is why we also uh, offer uh, the second uh, mode uh, uh, for running the installer which is called user provision infrastructure and in this scenario as you can see uh, it's it's uh, your responsibility to to install the um, to prepare the infrastructure so the nodes the networking uh, storage uh, and also there is a possibility here to uh, to leverage uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux as an operating system, uh, so the full RHEL uh, as an operating system for, for your uh, worker nodes. Uh, so still there is a requirement for CoreOS as, uh, as an operating system for your um, um, control plane nodes, but for uh, worker nodes you can leverage uh, also full uh, RHEL. And of course, our goal is to really provide uh, as much automation as possible in, in uh, for OpenShift installation. Uh, in previous version, it was a bit of challenge, especially mm -hmm. for more complex environments. There was a lot of unable configuration to, to, to do manually. Here, we want to automate as much as we can. So this first mode, this installer provision infrastructure mode is like um, preferred way for us and we want to support as much uh, infrastructures as, as as it is reasonable uh, to to allow installation of OpenShift. Uh, but this is not the end. We also wanted to uh, simplify the updates. Yeah, this is what I want to ask you. What about if you have a three version? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, migration from three to four is maybe a different story because okay. you will need uh, the, the tooling there is no like in place upgrades uh, okay you, so you're talking you about the updates in the, in the yes, version i'm talking itself. about updates okay. within the version or you know between version four and and anything that will be in the future uh, so uh, again this has been significantly uh, improved and simplified so so basically because we have uh, integrated operating system and OpenShift, uh, the upgrades are basically as easy as just uh, replace uh, the version of operating system with uh, with the uh, with the new uh, version with the new image uh, having uh, running a new version of uh, of CoreOS and, and OpenShift. So so the goal is to to really have like kind of one click updates for the platform, and also we follow the same path for uh, other components, but. I will talk about this uh, a bit later. Um, so now it's uh, it, it's a good time for uh, a short uh, demo, um, the, the first demo. Uh, so in this demo, I, I'm not going to show you how you can install OpenShift because it would take you 20, 30 minutes. Okay. So this is not uh, time for for webcast, but I want to show you some some new um, some new ide some new functionalities that has been introduced uh, for OpenShift um, management. So I think that the, the first one, which is uh, very very nice in OpenShift, is that we have uh, introduced a new API called Machine Sets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Machine API, and with this API, you can very easily scale. Uh, your um, uh, OpenShift cluster nodes. So you can see here uh, on my cluster I have four machine sets defined. Uh, actually this cluster runs on AWS so I have uh, one uh, machine set per each av availability zone in, uh, in, in the region where I installed my, my cluster. Uh, so you can see that I have uh, three machines, mm -hmm. uh, one machine per, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this three um, industry uh, machine sets, and now if I want to uh, make a, uh, if, if I want to scale my uh, my cluster, so if I want to add uh, add a new node, is as is it is as simple as clicking uh, the the button, and this uh, this will uh, introduce a process of provisioning a new virtual machine, and this machine will install all the. Uh, OpenShift components and will join my, my cluster in a few minutes. Um, there is also a big uh, change. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, it doesn't have to be manual. There's also a concept of uh, cl cluster autoscaler. Mm -hmm. so with the cluster autoscaler, uh, 
uh, the uh, the API might monitor your uh, the health of your your cluster, how many resources this cluster consumes, and it might scale automatically based on the the, the configuration of the auto scale. Okay. Uh, another uh, very interesting uh, feature of OpenShift is that uh, we we want to uh, promote uh, and. and uh, convince uh, users to uh, use OpenShift not only to to, to, to configure uh, the OpenShift component, but also to configure uh, the, the machine. So basically we have introduced uh, another API, which is called uh, Machine Config API, and mm -hmm. you can see here uh, the Machine Config pools. Uh, they basically they group the, 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 the individual configuration into a group. It's good that you said uh, you, 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 tr you will try to convince, not force, <laughs> users. <laughs> you, we have a choice still. As, as an administrator, you always can SSH to, to your node and... You know, do, do it the magic. Do the magic, exactly. But uh, with OpenShift 4, it's not necessary. So uh, let's have a look here. We have two, uh, two, two machine config pools. So uh, one uh, holds the co configuration for my master node and the other for worker nodes. So if we look on the uh, worker nodes, uh, you can see here there are multiple configurations uh, configuration here. And if we look, for example, on one of them, so for uh, the container runtime, uh, we can see here, if we go into the YAML, um, we can see here that there are, uh, that here we store the configurations of the five configuration files, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which uh, lives in on, on, the, on, on our cluster worker nodes. And this is uh, the way how we can also mo uh, modify those configurations, and those configurations will be applied automatically to our node. The node will be started, and, and we can do it uh, without touching or without doing the SSH magic, as you said, uh, on directly on, on the machine. Also, from uh, from the OpenShift command line interface, uh, you can uh, get access to uh, so basically open a SSH session to uh, to the node. So uh, you can see here on, on my uh, command line uh, screen, I have listed uh, the nodes I have in my cluster, and now uh, so you see six nodes. Yeah, six. Uh, six nodes, just like in the web console. And now, if I execute the uh, debug command. It will take a second, uh, but we should see that uh, um, OpenShift uh, will open for us uh, the, the terminal session with uh, the node. Uh, I can now switch to the node, and here you can see here I am mm -hmm. the node, and I can check, for example, um, the file I showed you. Configuration containers, yeah, it's the containers. Registry, registry is conf. This is the file you have seen uh, here in the uh, uh, UI with the YAML. YAML. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The information it was yeah, in the YAML. This file here is uh, URL encoded, but um, you, you can of course easily decode it. And here you can see the file uh, in a very plain uh, syntax. Uh, so, using this mechanism, you can modify the the configuration files on the on the node. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, um, so let's come back to the web console. Uh, this is what many people prefer. So, so uh, like you said, easier installation, easier updates, and eas easier, you know, scaling. Sa scaling. Yeah, Con scaling and you know the configuration. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, I would like to show you uh, quickly uh, the monitoring capabilities. So in OpenShift, uh, we have. Uh, uh, Prometheus uh, as a storage for metrics, and also we have uh, uh, we have a, a dashboards here uh, based on the Grafana, uh, where you can uh, visualize some metrics related to the uh, to your nodes, your cluster in, in general. Um, the same way as uh, in OpenShift 3, we also provide log aggregation. Uh, so with Kibana Elasticsearch, you c uh, we, we have built-in functionality to um, to collect all um, all, this, all this logs. Mm -hmm. This is a native component, so yeah. you, you, or you, it's automatically configured, so uh, you, and attached to the. 
Well, the, uh, uh, actually the, uh, the monitoring component is uh, installed out of the box automatically. Okay. Uh, so the the Elasticsearch and Kibana, yeah? Last, no, no, I mean the, 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 the monitoring component. So, okay. so um, Grafana and, and Prometheus, they are installed out of the box automatically, <laughs> but, uh, but logging is optional component, so you can install it uh, on your cluster if, if, you want to, if you want to use it. Um, there is also a change how you configure the cluster. So in general, uh, if, you, if you remember from version three, cluster configuration was basically distributed between dif different, um, let's say, areas or places. So there were some components that you had to configure on the operating system level. Mm -hmm. There were some components that you had to, uh, that you had to configure on the uh, Kubernetes le level. There were some components that you need to configure basically uh, on on the with some configuration files. Uh, with OpenShift 4, we want to, uh, we have changed that and all the configuration is done uh, also um, here uh, okay. using the standardized API. So we have centralized uh, it and yeah, you can so one all the view to, to exactly. an easy editor. Ex exactly, so all the components that, uh, that, that belong to your cluster, okay. they can be configured from, uh, from this, either from web console or from the, mm -hmm. the command line. So just a quick example, uh, the OAuth configuration. So this is the configuration when you confi where, you c where you set up the identity provider. So with identity provider, we manage uh, the user authentication to, to the cluster. And, and uh, in, in version three, you had to co uh, modify some, uh, f uh, some, configure some files on the operating system level. Here you see uh, that this, this configuration lives in one of these uh, cluster uh, configurations. Um, okay, so let's move on uh, to, to the slides again. Um, so the second uh, big change and, and big topic for OpenShift 4 is, uh, is the focus on cloud-like experience. So uh, cloud-like experience, what does it really mean? So if you... Yeah, that was, that was my next question. Yeah, <laughs> so if, if, you, if, you, if you are a user of, uh, I know, AWS or uh, or Azure or other uh, public cloud. Um, so you get used to uh, to work with with, the, with this platform in the way that you have some some marketplace, some console where you order mm -hmm. some services you want to use. So either virtual machine or whatever so you, you need don't to. You want to care about the lower layers. Yeah, yes. and and everything is provisioned for you automatically uh, in the backend. So this is basically uh, what we uh, call here cloud-like experience, and we wanted also to give that. Uh, cloud experience uh, everywhere in, in OpenShift. And this is uh, basically uh, done using uh, two components. So uh, first of them is uh, the, the multi-cluster management functionality, which uh, is a uh, completely new thing uh, that we developed in order to allow customers to, to monitor and manage multiple clusters from single mm -hmm. console. And the other one is the framework, uh, operator's uh, framework. So it's, uh, it, could, it will be beneficial for those who are planning to have some installation on-prem and extend the cluster into, for example, AWS. Exactly, yes, because uh, as you know, with OpenShift, uh, OpenShift can be installed on, on many infrastructures. Uh, you can see here in public cloud on-premise, um, and uh, you know, it might be beneficial for you for, for many reasons to have uh, one central console where where you can uh, register your cluster, where mm -hmm. you will get uh, some, um, you can manage your subscription, you can manage, uh, you can get some notifications uh, about updates, new versions, and w y you can you can in initialize the, the upgrades from, from the console. Are we talking only about the management part, or are we talking also about some migration op options to migrate between one cluster to another today? Uh, not yet, but probably okay. th this is also the area for you know for the space to grow <laughs> for, for for develop this 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 solution because it's it, it's brand new in, uh, f functionality which okay. has been introduced in, in version four. Uh, but what is probably even more interesting here is the operators framework. So uh, the operators are the new way how you can manage uh, the life cycle of any any service or application that you want to deploy. Kubernetes. So uh, this this framework uh, covers the whole life cycle of your uh, continuous application, 
starting from the installation to the updates and, and monitoring, uh, even up to some uh, self-healing and tuning, which is, which is only uh, implemented in your uh, in your um, operator. Um, and uh, this we, we use this framework in in OpenShift very heavily uh, to basically manage the life cycle of all the components that are part of the OpenShift as well as we uh, created an open, open uh, registry for operators mm -hmm. called Operator Hub. In the Operator Hub, uh, the Operator Hub is a registry for the operators and those operators uh, are either uh, Red Hat products, so th this could be components, <laughs> uh, optional components for OpenShift, uh, like for example, the, the logging, uh, log aggregation uh, component or this can be uh, other Red Hat products like, for example, JBoss middleware uh, family products. Uh, but also this, uh, uh, this, this uh, registry is a place where you can, um, where our ISV partners or the uh, open source communities, upstream communities can, uh, can register and, and offer access to, to, to their operators. Uh, and this is exactly what I wanted to show you uh, as, a, as a second demo. Um, so again, uh, uh, we can start basically where we have stopped. So uh, in okay. in regards to to the OpenShift, uh, there is a uh, as I mentioned, uh, we use operators heavily in OpenShift. So basically, all the functionalities uh, that are running on top of Kubernetes in OpenShift, they mm -hmm. are now uh, installed using the operator, and they are managed by the oh. operator. So you can see here. Uh, uh, the huge, uh, huge library of installed operators, and the configuration for these operators is exactly what I shown you before. Okay. So, so those, uh, those yeah. configuration uh, resources. Uh, but this is not uh, not the end of the uh, usage of the operator. So we can go here to the operators operator hub view, and here you will, you you have a list of the operators that are uh, uh, available uh, in the registry. Uh, if we look, for example, on uh, OpenShift optional operators, you can see here that there are some uh, some some operators uh, which provide uh, the additional functionalities uh, that will extend uh, the core mm -hmm. functionality of your cluster. So, for example, this cluster logging, Elasticsearch, uh, federation uh, for federated deployments. Uh, there are some also some um, some other utility. Um, um, operators, uh, for example, QVIR. So if you want to try and run uh, KVM virtual machine in OpenShift, you can do it with that operator or uh, metering. So if you want to uh, define some chargeback or some, some metering reports of usage of, of your cluster, okay. there is also the operator that in will install uh, this, this functionality. So this is what you said, it's like a marketplace, you know, yeah, you it just is, you yes. know, drag and see, find it, and you can download automatically. And it will go to, uh, to the sequence you, sh you, sh you show this operator. So it will be in the operators. You can configure it later on. Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, not necessarily in, in that uh, previous screen, but uh, okay. it, it will be it, the operator. When you install the operator, uh, it will introduce for you some additional functionality. So we can have a look here, for example, on my cluster uh, on the, the list of operators. Uh, installed operators. Uh, so this is not complete list, but uh, let's let's just focus on on, on that one. Uh, so you see here some operators that are installed on my on my cluster, and then if we go into the details of the operator, we can see what kind of uh, API. So this means what kind of let's say objects or you know applications services this operator yeah. provides. So in this we have it here the example of AMQ Streams operator, which which is basically a, a Kafka uh, messaging platform operator. So this operator provides you the possibility to install a Kafka cluster and some Kafka, uh, Kafka components. And this is, uh, this is basically the, uh, and, and the big benefit of, the, of those operators is that when there is a new version, um, when there is a new version of your, um, of the operator released, uh, it will be downloaded and then uh, based on the subscription that you created, uh, you might have uh, the uh, automated upgrade of your 
uh, of your um, service that is managed by the operator. And also in case of some, some failures, some uh, errors, uh, the operators will monitor your service okay. and will, will make uh, automatically the update. So, so that's uh, basically uh, how this vision of uh, cloud-like experience yeah. is, uh, rea uh, is implemented. So you have a marketplace here and you, have, uh, you install the operator and the magic of the mm -hmm. installation behind is happening uh, in the in the uh, you know in, in the back background. Uh, all right, so let's let's move on to to the slides again. Uh, and the last part of the, uh, of, of the of the of the new uh, offering new functionalities is the uh, is the uh, set of tools focused for on developers. So I always repeat that. OpenShift is really a platform for uh, developer for, for for applications and for fast uh, mm -hmm. uh, application development. So, uh, you know, having uh, tools uh, best in the class tools uh, for developers is really a, a big focus here. And in OpenShift uh, four, uh, there are a number of new uh, tools that either are already introduced or will be introduced soon. So first of all is service mesh. So service mesh is a important component of microservice um, uh, based uh, applications. So this is a pl platform that you can use to, to manage, uh, in general, to manage, monitor the, the communication between your microservices, uh, which can be very complex and, and, and requires typically a, a special uh, attention. And this is, this is uh, why this, this tools like uh, Istio or project like Istio has been uh, created. The other one is, is serverless functionality. Uh, so we have uh, uh, decided to, uh, to, to provide serverless functionality with, uh, with the Knative project. So with Knative, uh, Knative project allows the, let's say, native uh, integration of serverless functionalities into the Kubernetes. And this is the way how we want to uh, provide the serverless um, functionality. So what does it mean serverless here in, in Kubernetes? It basically means that you deploy the image of your, with your service or application, but uh, you don't need to start the pod at the time of uh, deploying your image, but it will be started automatically, which will be deployed automatically okay. when the request to, 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 <coughs> this, uh, to the service will, will come okay, from the so you don't need platform. to pre-configure it? You, you, you don't need to run it, basically, okay. when, when you install it. Uh, it, will be, it will be started and deployed when the traffic will come mm -hmm. to it. And this is a very nice solution for any event-driven applications, or which, which are you know, reacting on some events, for example. Uh, then we have uh, code-ready workspaces. So this is the IDI. Uh, so uh, what you see on the screen here is basically uh, an IDI which you open in, in your browser. So uh, it is deployed fully on OpenShift, and uh, developer can uh, build, deploy the application uh, using the, the web browser, browser yeah, web, um, web browser-based uh, IDI interface. You think it will be a common thing? You know. Uh, <laughs> What's your opinion? Well, I, I, I played a little bit with it. Uh, I think it is uh, very nice in, in case when you have some application deployed and, and you want to make some quick changes because it is easy. Okay. You can quickly, wh wherever you are, basically, you can quickly just log in somewhere and uh, open a uh, editor and, and make some you know code, build, build some code, and then uh, go through your CI CD and, and mm -hmm. uh, get it to production. Uh, whether this will be a tooling for uh, for like big applications, we'll see. Uh, the, so the developers cannot say go to work and say I I just forgot my laptop, so I cannot work on my. <laughs> my Def <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. And, and so go to the browser, work on it. And, and, and you think if you think more about it, it it might really make developers' life much easier, and also it m might make your uh, you know your organization more more secure because you have. Uh, better control over the source code. Mm -hmm. uh, there is less, you know, the the overhead on maintaining the mm -hmm. development environment. So there this are many benefits. Also thinking it's, it's yeah, a, it, 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 it could be a brilliant part uh, if you know you just giving the credentials and you you just giving the or you can easily just using your web browser whatever you have it, yeah. Linux, Macs or Windows and w work on it. 
Exactly. Yeah. At some time, you know, you will have just like, you know tablet or something. You just sit and code. Uh, it's already already available in OpenShift, so if this looks interesting for you, you can deploy it on top of OpenShift uh, and, and try it. Uh, next thing, very interesting, is, is CI/CD, uh, cloud native CI/CD. So we have uh, uh, we, we have uh, joined the Tecton project, and uh, with Tecton project, uh, there is a new implementation of uh, CI/CD processes, which is built in Kubernetes. So mm -hmm. in version three. Uh, the CI/CD was based on the Jenkins, which is basically an external tool that you install on top of OpenShift. Uh, in version four, we also support Jenkins, but uh, we, we I would say we, we joined the, the the wave of, of change in this area, and, and we want wanted to make it more easy and more straightforward and, and better integrated with with Kubernetes. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention um, is the universal base image. Uh, so all the applications we run in OpenShift, they are uh, containerized. So we need to build the images. And it was kind of a challenge uh, for, for some customers uh, due to some uh, you know, legal obligations. They couldn't always use uh, rail-based images, rail-based rail images to, to build their application or to run their applications. Uh, and we wanted to change that, so we wanted to uh, give uh, a, a, a new base images for, uh, that can be used by anybody and they can be, uh, and you can run containers anywhere uh, based on that images uh, and this is why we, we introduced this this new, new universal base image uh, which is a base image for rel uh, 7 and uh, rel uh, 8 uh, so that pretty much all in regards to uh, to the new features of course you know there are some more much more but but these are I think the most uh, significant uh, uh, New features that that are introduced or were introduced in OpenShift 4. Uh, I wanted to to give you uh, two links uh, for the end. Okay, come back, come back, come back to the slide. Why why the four is burning right now? It's, it's on fire. You know it or it's just marketing? <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> any you know, any story so behind? It's so hot that it's ah, it's burning. so hot. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, if something is very hot, it starts burning at some point. So. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> But this is just my interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> my interpretation. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I wanted to leave you with some uh, with two links. So first is learn.openshift.com. So if you want to try without you know any installation, some of those components like service mesh or uh, Knative or OpenShift in general, uh, you can go to that web page and mm -hmm. uh, take some hands-on courses uh, without need for you know installing or running uh, the platform yourself. If you want to take it's a long courses or it's a one-hour courses, or you, any any hints from your side? Uh, it depends. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, typically the, the, this course they, they are built. Uh, they they have number of you know um, stages or modules. Mm -hmm. Modules, yeah, exactly. So. Uh, you can very, f in a very flexible way, you can we can take those okay. trainings. Um, they are very nice because you have you know you have web console, you have uh, command line interface, so you interact with with the, with this environment just like it would be a, okay, a, a full 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 open ship. So I think really nice to to try. Uh, one one more web, web page uh, which uh, we, we we didn't uh, give you the link. So if you if, if you change learn into try so t r i dot openshift dot com, uh, this is where you can start the, uh, your journey with uh, deploying OpenShift in your uh, okay. in your organi in your uh, or in public or, or in your uh, uh, own uh, infrastructure. So learn openshift dot com and try openshift dot com are. Uh, to to addresses for you to go. Okay, and I think that that's so we it have a for now. Right now for a question is you know we had a forty minutes is thirty six so you have a really good timing, uh, yeah. my, my friend. So right now we're closing the the recording and we'll go into the QA session right now. Okay. So thank you everybody to, for joining our web webinar. It was the second part uh, with the Yagoslav Stakun. Uh, and we are preparing for the next one. Do, do you have any, any 
Uh, clue what we will what we will cover it in the next one. Well, I think I would I would come back to this uh, last part of, 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 of this webinar so to give you more details about uh, okay. some some nice features for for developers and, and of course to sh I would try to show you also some of them. Okay, so in action. Uh, lo looking forward to it. We will have been, we have it always in six eight weeks intervals. So uh, please uh, go on Open Visualization Pro, subscribe and get the latest knowledge. So thank you everybody for, for this session. We're right now going into the QA.